Pacing occurs when a potential difference, that is voltage, is applied between two electrodes. Pacemakers can use either a unipolar or bipolar mode of pacing. With bipolar pacing, the potential difference occurs between the proximal ring, which is the anode, and the lead tip, the cathode. In contrast, with unipolar pacing, the potential difference occurs between the lead tip and the pulse generator, such that the electrons flow between the pulse generator and the lead tip. So let's take a look at both of these here. So a few main things that you have to be aware of is that electrons flow from the anode, okay, the positive pole, to the cathode. So if you look here, here's your anode, this is the positive end, and this is your cathode, the negative end, electrons flow in this direction, okay? And that's what we have here. So this is an example of bipolar pacing. So bipolar pacing, the electrons are flowing from the proximal ring, which would be this portion here. So this would be the proximal ring. And they're flowing over to the lead tip. So this here would be your lead tip that's then interfacing on the endocardium. So what you have here is the electron flowing from the anode to the cathode in this direction, okay? So that's how we have uh, it going on here. And the unipolar, so this unipolar, you have the anode, okay? And the anode in this case is the pulse generator can, which is this area here. And again, electrons are flowing from the anode which is the positive pole to the cathode, which is now the lead tip, okay? So here's your cathode down here, and this is your lead tip, the negative end, and the electrons are flowing from the positive to negative, so from anode to cathode in this direction, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. The main thing you should note here is that this lead tip in both cases is essentially serving as the cathode, the negative pole of this. Okay, so electrons are heading towards that direction. Now, as you can see here, electrons have to travel a longer distance in unipolar pacing. So in this one here, and as a result, they require more energy to depolarize the myocardium. Furthermore, currents flowing from the pulse generator that can into the lead tip may stimulate excitable tissue between the two. And this can result in large stimulation artifacts that we see on the EKG. In bipolar pacing, the anode and cathode are located within the heart, which helps to minimize this uh, stimulation artifact. Okay, so again with unipolar, look how far. This is, again, underneath the patient's chest wall, okay, right here. And it has to go from that region all the way to inside the heart. So between that, this gap here, there may be some other things that are picked up, excitable tissue that may cause some artifact that occur, okay? The electrons have to flow so far. Now with bipolar pacing, imagine that this is your lead tip, okay? And what do I mean by that? So imagine that now you essentially have this whole thing inserted right here, okay? So that you have your anode in a position right here, and then you have your cathode here. Okay, they're all located very close to each other within the heart, and this will minimize the stimulation artifact because it does not have to travel so far. Notice the electrons would just travel from the anode to cathode within on that lead. Okay, so that helps to minimize stimulation artifact with these bipolar pacing modes. All right, so let's review what we discussed before we end here. So pacing occurs when there's a potential difference or there's a voltage that is applied between two electrodes, okay? The electron flow is always from the anode, the positive end, to the cathode, the negative pole, okay? Now, bipolar pacing and unipolar pacing. The difference here is bipolar pacing, as we saw here, goes from the proximal ring, the anode, to the lead tip, the cathode. And this is the one that minimizes the stimulation artifact on the EKG. With unipolar pacing, we're at risk of more stimulation artifact, okay? And that's because the electrons have to flow a, far, uh, flow a farther distance uh, compared to that in the bipolar, okay? Your anode's here, your cathode's here, and it has to flow that whole distance 
all the way to the cathode. So you can see that it may pick up some stimulation, some excitable tissue between the two, causing some stimulation or an artifact on the EKG. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discussed unipolar and bipolar pacing. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available I had help with uh, my colleague Dr. Peter Noseworthy who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it so this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful so go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.